the three main deep uh, fungal infections, often called chronic pneumonias, are almost always just rattled off as histoplasmosis, blastomycosis, coccidiomycosis. Both blastomycosis and coccidiomycosis have nice little uh, balls or yeasts within cells which are about the size of a nucleus. They're pretty big. But I want to show you the differentiation now of the uh, first one, which is called histoplasmosis. And the reason why um, I particularly like this picture is it's taken by a friend of mine, and it's so superior to anything I've ever seen in any of the textbooks. All of these cells here are macrophages. I call them histiocytes, if you will. Macrophage is probably the better name. You see all these little purple granules in them, how small they are compared to the nucleus? These are all individual organisms of histoplasmosis. The genus and species is Histoplasma capsulatum. Uh, all of the deep fungal diseases have characteristic differences in epidemiology and morphology and even clinical expressions, even though they all look a lot like TB clinically. I just wanted to show you that from a differentiation of the microscopic morphology, histoplasma is so very, very much different from the other two. In the other two, you have big round balls that are about the size of the nucleus. Up here, you have tiny little cytoplasmic structures that are about one thousandth as big as a nucleus. Um, okay, let's move into our last, uh, second to the last group of infectious agents, which we'll spend a little more time in classifying, the protozoans, the single-celled um, kingdom. I guess it's a kingdom or a sub-kingdom. And there's about five or six or seven maybe common protozoal diseases. And without a doubt, malaria is by far the most clinically important, by far still one of the big uh, top worldwide killers. Uh, the sp species name is Plasmodium. There's, I'm sorry, the genus name is Plasmodium. There are four main human species. Falciparum is always the most serious and the m one that's most likely to be resistant. We'll get into that life cycle in the next picture, but I wanted to mention a couple of others quickly. You'll probably never see them. You should generally know about them a little bit. Uh, babesiosis is transmitted by a deer tick, not a mosquito, which malaria is, but it has remarkable similarities uh, to malaria, both morphologically and clinically. The big difference is it's a very, very rare in humans. You should probably know about it. I don't think you'll ever see a case. There is another protozoal disease, now not in involving blood so much as uh, cutaneous and visceral. So there are both cutaneous and visceral varieties of leishmaniasis. And like the other two, there's a vector. In this case, it's a sand fly, just like the deer tick was for babesiosis, and the Anopheles mosquito was for malaria. And in leishmaniasis, uh, it's a sand fly, uh, and it causes a wide variety of uh, diseases involving skin and the deeper, more serious ones in the viscera. Uh, sleeping sickness, the common sleeping sickness, also a protozoal disease, also a blood protozoal disease. It can be confused a little bit with malaria because you can find these little critters uh, near or on or by blood cells, and that's trypanosomiasis. There's the classical version of trypanosomiasis caused by the tsetse fly in Africa, as well as a South American variant of trypanosomiasis, which is not called sleeping sickness, it's called Chagas disease, C-H-A-G-A-S. So the common differential of trypanosome diseases is trypanosomiasis in Africa and Chagas disease in South America. Last but not least, we can't forget the amoebas, the amoebas are a common cause of uh, colon infections, diarrheal infections, uh, large bowel infections. The causative agent is usually Entamoeba histolytica. Uh, so an Entamoeba histolytica infection or amoebiasis is usually a colitis. 
but you have to remember that they can also wind up forming abscesses in various places of which liver is the most common site. Okay, I hope that wasn't uh, uh, too bad of a rundown of the protozoal diseases in general. I think I have to say a couple more words about malaria. That's about as close as you'll ever get to an Anopheles species mosquito. There's really not much that really differentiates it that much from any other looking mosquito unless you really go to the taxonomy books and look at all the features, which I don't even know what they are. But uh, that's basically the vector. That's where the uh, sexual cycle of the uh, organism takes place, uh, the plasmodium species. And in man, it's the asexual cycle, like it is with many of the um, uh, protozoal and parasitic infections in general. The human has the asexual phase of the cycle. The mosquito has the sexual phase. And uh, I guess a good place to start would probably be when the Anopheles mosquito bites you. When he bites you, he released sporozoites, which has developed inside of him or her, because as you know, it's only the female mosquito that can infect you. Uh, those sporozoites are then uh, transported through the blood to the liver, and they develop in liver cells or hepatocytes and release tiny structures called merozoites. These merozoites go through a variety of stages inside of red blood cells now, which are eventually released as gametocytes, both male and female. These gametocytes are then picked up by the mosquito again when he does his thing, and they develop now in a sexual stage involving fertilization, zygote, meiosis, eventually developing these uh, oocysts again, which release the sporozoites. And that's the life cycle of uh, plasmodium. There's four species, and we'll talk about them a little bit because uh, in the lab we always have fun trying to figure out which one is, wit is which. But um, no matter what species you're dealing with, uh, even l in regular blood smells or ones that could are stained slightly more specifically for malaria, you can see these little various stages of the organisms in the red cell. And we'll get into that a little bit now. Here's an absolutely spectacular false color scanning electron micrograph of some red cells being infected by plasmodium uh, organisms. So this is classically what malaria might look like on a regular blood film. Here are some various stages of development. Sometimes they use the word schizons or ring forms or things that might not be, uh, you might not remember or need to know very much, but the end result, the final thing that's released here is a gametocyte. And because Plasmodium falciparum is without a doubt the most serious and clinically important and the one that's most likely to be resistant to anti common anti-malarial drugs, just remember that the only uh, gametocyte that is shaped like this sausage is seen in Plasmodium falciparum. Having said that, let's uh, run down some of the four different patterns, uh, hopefully quickly. Plasmodium falciparum uh, starts out with a, uh, a cell that's normal. What's in it inspected, it can show a little slight marginal structure. They then develop into ring forms Sometimes you could see a few little dots, but the ring forms generally uh, develop into trophozoites. The trophozoites, trophozoites eventually develop into schizonts, S-C-H-I-Z-O-N-T, and then the schizonts will eventually develop into a mature gametocyte, either female or male. And those are the things that are released back into this critter's nose here the Anopheles mosquito. Uh, remember, the diagnostic feature, if you want to know this, you may, you know, I hate to say this, but they could very well put this on the board, is that when you see a blood cell that has a little malaria hot dog inside of it, this is only seen in falciparum. It's not seen in the other types. That's one of the distinguishing features. Um, another type of malaria, Plasmodium vivax, goes through the same sequence of 
ring forms, trophozoites, schizonts. Well, look, the gametocytes are not sausage shaped. In addition, both Plasmodium vivax as well as Plasmodium ovale have these real bright red dots in the cell called Schuffner's dots. Only vivax and ovale have this. Falciparum and malariae do not. And speaking of malariae, here's another type. You go from ring form to schizont to gametocyte. And in the last form, you have the same thing. You're going from, whoops, hello, ovale. You're going from ring forms to schizont to gametocytes. And of course, like VVAX, they also have the Schuffner's dot. So is it easy to uh, compare, uh, get ovale confused with VVAX? Probably is uh, on a regular smear. Um, but once again, you normally don't have to go in, in your setting and try to figure out what species it is. All you have to do is look at who, uh, you know, what was uh, endemic to the area. The, uh, one of the, the second to the last type of uh, protozoal disease we'll talk about of tremendous worldwide importance, particularly in Africa, is trypanosomiasis, another uh, protozoan infecting blood having more of a uh, squiggly and extracellular configuration. Sleeping sickness caused by the bite of the tsetse fly. Here he is with a scanning electron micrograph, false color. And here he has a nice close-up pictures. There's really nothing bizarrely unique about looking at these flies. They just look like big flies. But remember, the other type of trypanosomiasis is uh, in South America, and for some reason, that's just not called trypanosomiasis, even though it's caused by a trypanosome. That's called Chagas disease. And uh, last but not least, uh, I think we just ran over time. Thank you very much.